In this video, we are gonna take a look at the updated parameters for the image to material AI powered filter. The team has improved the feature set and streamlined the controls. This gives you more flexibility and will allow you to work with a larger variation of the type of image inputs you can use with image to material AI powered. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna take the bark image and just drag and drop that here to the Alchemist UI. And here I have image to material AI powered selected as the option. So we'll click OK and we'll let the AI compute this material. And just like that, we have our material. Okay, so let's take a look at these updated parameters. So here in the layer stack, I'm just going to left click on image to material AI powered. Here we can view the parameters. Now at the very top, you'll notice that we have this new section here called geometry details. So we can get a better look at what these sliders are going to do. I'm gonna jump over here to my normal output and just zoom in. So we have micro, medium, and large details. And by adjusting these sliders, I can set the overall geometry detail here for my material. So for example, if I come over here to the micro detail and I set the slider all the way here to zero, you can see that it basically softens all of that micro detail information. Again, let me zoom in a little closer. And now let's set this all the way here towards one. And you can see that we really intensify those micro details. And so we can use our slider to really set this right where we need it to be. Same thing with the medium detail. If I set this to zero, we smooth out those medium details. And by setting this closer to a value of one, we start to intensify or bring out the medium details here in our material. And lastly, we have the same thing for the large details. I'll bring the slider here closer to one and you can see that we really start to intensify those large details. So like I said, going through the slider and setting a balance between these categories really lets you bring out specifically fine tune results for how you want the overall geometry details to represent your material. Now we have this invert normal option to simply invert the normal and you can see that we can actually choose which channel we want to invert. This option is nice to have in case the AI gets it wrong. So we have this extra control. All right, so next, let's take a look at the geometry equalizer. And this is essentially talking about our height. So let me jump over here in the 2D view. Let's take a look at our height output. And we can use this geometry equalizer to adjust our height map. Now again, we have height invert handy just in case the AI gets it wrong. So next up, we have ambient occlusion strength. So let's take a look at the occlusion output. And here we just have our strength slider. So we can dial this up and down. Now we have this new slider here, which lets us work with the overall delighting intensity. So for this, let's jump over here to our base color and take a look at the albedo. And I'm going to zoom out the view so we can get an overall look at how the albedo was computed. And what I can do is simply take this slider and decrease the intensity. So for example, if I set this all the way to zero, this is essentially no delighting taking place here in the image. And so here you can see that we have a lot of these harsh shadows. Well, it looks like the AI did a pretty good job about removing those shadows, but there can be instances where maybe the delighting is a bit too intense. So now we have this control that allows you to adjust the overall intensity, which lets you fine tune the result of the delighting. Now we have this roughness and here you can see that we have a lot of new roughness parameters. Let's jump over here to the roughness output and take a look. So you'll notice here right off the bat that we have this base value. So I can move the base value up and down to basically just overall adjust the well base value of our roughness. Now here we also have this new variation slider. So let's zoom in and take a look at a lot of this detail. So with the variation slider, you can see that I can introduce or sharpen a lot of the variation here as it appears in my roughness map. Now, we also have this softness slider here that you can use to kind of help feather this effect in and out. Now here you'll notice that we have this slider called albedo details importance. Now what we do here is we take the albedo and we convert that to grayscale. We invert this to blend it into the roughness. So if your material has important color differences and gradients, you can influence your roughness map based on that information. And again, we can use this slider to control that. And then lastly here, once again, we have this handy invert option, which lets you invert the map if you find the AI's compute was incorrect. So that's gonna take care of this update to image to material AI powered. As you can see, we've refined the overall parameters. This gives you more flexibility, lets you work with a greater variation of input material types, 
and most importantly, gives you more control over the materials that are being created. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.